Hey everybody! I'm going to start this video by showing you the dry painting of, um, I think I called this one, The Flingies Are Back. And, uh, well, it's actually, a well, it was wet in a touch spots, but for the most part, it is dry and really cool. So I am super psyched about this, and I'm as happy with this as I am with my circles. So I decided maybe my thing isn't uh, circles, but um, MDF. Maybe that's my true love. So, but these things are big, and I am so running out of space. <laughs> need to, need to get these out of here. <laughs> but I am going to pour a circle today. And I am also, once I get everything situated, um, I'm also, for some of you that have been watching me, this will all be fairly redundant. But um, for those that don't, um, I'm going to give you a lot of info. Um, I know that some people watch this with the sound off, so um, I think I'll put a little caption here that I have lots of info, so, you know, put the sound back on, <laughs> because when I watch YouTube videos, I usually watch them with the sound off, unless it's like a total instructional video that I need to hear, or a music video, because those aren't fun to listen to with the sound off. Okie dokie. I'm going to start by telling you what colors I'm going to use. And this will be the first lesson about my paint mixing. Um, so I've got Grumbacher Alizarin, Grumbacher Turqu Turquoise Green, and Grumbacher Prussian Blue. And I bought these today, and they were out of the Prussian. So I was kind of bummed about that, because I love that color. So if you search under, there's like the little search button on my front page, Type in paint mixing and a couple videos will come up. Um, I use Floetrol and water in all my paints, uh, be it these artist paints or my white paint, which is Dutch Boy. And you can use um, whatever paint, interior latex paint um, that you have readily available. Um, people have told me they've, I've had good luck with, uh, Benjamin Moore. Um, you know, Home Depot has their brands and Lowe's and this is from Menards. I have not found it anywhere else. Um, and I just mix, I like mine thin, so I mix, you know, to a pretty thin consistency, but you'll have to find what consistency you like to work with. Everybody's got their own preference. I do not follow a recipe whatsoever. I just kind of dump them in stir and see what happens. Um, I've also been using, uh, lately, here and there, is this iridescent medium. And today, like, I mixed all my paints like normal. And then I put some into the turquoise. And then I had to add a little bit of water because this is thick. So it actually thickened it up, which might be, you know, if you've mixed your paints too thin, you could always use this to thicken it back up. The silicone I use is the Spot On Treadmill Silicone from Amazon. I do now have a link to products I like on Amazon. So look in the description box and you'll find those. I only use it in one color, two colors max. Um, so I've got two drops in this. This is about one and a half ounces, and I'll only be using a touch of that in this pour. So my pores have very, very little silicone, and I get lots of cells, so you don't need a lot of silicone too much, and it's oily, and it's not going to do what you want it to do. Um, in my earlier pours, I've gotten a lot of people who have been... Uh, watching older videos and they're coming upon those first. Um, and it's interesting their questions because so much has changed. 
This is what I used to use, the WD-40 and the black can silicone. And I would spray it into the flip cup. And that's how I used to do it. Um, but I don't anymore. I switched to the treadmill. I mean, I still use this here and there. But I switched to the treadmill. A, it's um, health, not healthier. It's not like I'm eating it. But um, it's not an aerosol. So... Now it's got that going for you. And um, while we're on the topic of aerosols, <laughs> I'm going to touch on um, varnishing. I like this Liquitex gloss varnish. I have a video of showing how I use this. I apply it with a damp uh, um, sponge. I do two or three coats of that. Um, and I don't bother to clean my canvases if I'm using just a varnish. I only do when I resin. And I resin using art resin, and I have some videos on that as well. For sprays, I like both of these. They're both Krylon. This is Triple Fit Crystal Clear Glaze, and this is UV Resistant Clear in Gloss. Um, this is supposed to, this says... Bright glass-like coating. Um, to me, they look almost identical. I have sprayed paintings and set them next to each other, and they look almost the same. This is a little bit more glass-like coating, I suppose, but um, virtually indistinguishable from each other. I love these. These are really good. They smell like to all high heaven, but they're nice. I like them. And it seems it can last a while. Um, so I've done varnish, I've done paint mixing. I'm gonna tell you about this. This is, I've been lately using MDF. I apologize, I can't tell you where to get them because I'm having somebody at work cut them for me. Um, so it's the shop teacher at school, but which may be an option for some of you. Contact if you know anybody who works at the high school. You know, I'm sure a lot of these shop teachers do these things on the side. And he's just charging me like a flat rate per sheet. And you get a lot of cuts of the sheets. I am looking at two spiders right now. And they're, usually I would just let them be. They're... There we go. I work in my basement, so there are spiders. Except for the one time I did a live and somebody said, oh my God, that's huge spider. And there was no spider. I tape the back up. Um, I've been using uh, Jules told me I've been just using painter's tape for resin and whatnot, but um, duct tape works great. And I've been putting it on before because that gives an added uh, layer of protection because you know how paint will drip over the edge and kind of form its own seal. And then when I resin, this part's already sealed from that paint so it really can't get under. And the last one I resin with the duct tape, just the resin just popped right off. And I have coated this with gesso, and then I sanded it. I only did one coat. So, and I'm shaking up. This is where I keep my mixed white. So it's the white paint flow trial and water. I'm keeping it in here. Oh, and the second most common question is, this is a washing machine pan that I'm using. So that's always a question asked. And let me show you, these are not PVC pipe. They are um, adjustable shelving 
racks. You can see the holes for, they go, they're uh, tracks, shelving tracks. So they are flat, that's why they don't roll. So I'm gonna make up my flip cup. Actually, I'm gonna do a one ounce. This way you won't use too much. And this is one of the Amazon products I like. Um, this one you just don't use that much. So I am going to layer them in no specific order. And I plan to, after I do it, do like I did with the one, the flingies pour, and try and go back and put these on top. I'm gonna see if it works. Because it worked yesterday and it gave me the red and the yellow on top, which separated it from the rest, which I liked. Um, there was, I can't think of the other thing I was gonna mention right away. Um, paint cracking is another thing a lot of people mention. Um, and my paint doesn't, I don't have a problem with that. So I don't have a lot of experience. I've had, um, a couple here and there, um, but not like in a long time. Sometimes from my flip and drag, I'll have a texture but not like actual cracks. It's just more of a texture. So I've, just from what I've known from being on this Facebook, that, uh, add a little bit more of this. Some people have problems when they use white craft paint, you know, the like, little bottles, um, as opposed to other paints. So I know, so if you're using those little craft paints and your paint is cracking, stop using those. Um, if your paint is too thick, it can crack. Um, if it's under like a fan or air conditioning blowing on it or something like that, then that's another thing that can cause it. Um, and I had one painting, like one, it was actually one of the first ones I did and I totally loved it. It was a big nine by, or nine, big 12 by 24. I'm taking out chunks right now. And it cracked in little tiny, almost like, like an X, X's shapes all over it. And what I did, because I love the painting. So I glued on those um, flat glass marbles, the clear ones. And I glued them in a pattern, like kind of a swooshy pattern, directly over the main cracks. And they kind of... Um, uh, like magnified the cracks. And so, I mean, it looks like I put them there on purpose. I mean, it looks really cool. Um, and as I say, sometimes I will get a texture on my paintings and I've shown that to you guys before. Um, sometimes it's almost like a, a ribbed texture. Um, and sometimes it's just in one area. And I've had other times where I'll have little pinholes everywhere and that's usually air bubbles that I hadn't torched out enough. Um, so watch the craft paint, watch the thickness of your paint because um, if there is too much it will crack because it will dry way too fast on the top with too much underneath. Um, so I've seen other people who, when their paintings have cracked, they have um, 
rubbed in like some metallic gold powder and stuff to kind of highlight it and um yeah because some people have said it cracked and I'll say well how's it look you know and they're like I like it and I'm like well then there's nothing wrong with it um and to other people you know they're like oh I it's well I know one person said you know it cracked can I still sell it and I said, well, do you like it? You know, how's it look? Do you like it? And they said, yes. And I said, well, then sell it. I mean, who's to say you didn't put those cracks there on purpose? I mean, art comes in all forms. So cracking paint doesn't have to be negative. Um, if you still like the the design, the, the colors, the, you know, what have you, then, you know, who cares? Well, I almost threw this. So yeah, so I, so I have had texture, but I don't. My paint just doesn't crack. This white paint has never cracked on me, the Dutch boy. I'm trying to think what I would have used the, that painting of mine that cracked in the early days would have been craft paint, and there was white in it. It was my first uh, primer. I used red, blue, and yellow, and I'm pretty sure there was white. And um, as I say, one of my first, and I just love it. It's hanging upstairs. I'll have to bring it down one of these days. And I know this is really boring watching me cover this whole thing in white, which is why I'm trying to talk, talk, talk about Stuff that people have asked questions on. Alrighty. Okay. And I like to stick my fingers in the paint. <laughs> My torch, this is just Coleman um, butane or propane, propane. And like you would go camping. I bought, this was actually from the camping section at Walmart. And then this is a torch head. You buy it like in the plumbing area of uh, hardware stores. And it's a... Um, uh, what do you call it? Self-igniting. There's the right word. Because I used to have the kind where I had to light it with a lighter. And I didn't even know there was this kind. So when I finally saw this kind, I was like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing on earth. Even though they apparently have been around forever, I did not know that. So to me, it was like a miracle. So I think I've shared how my first, the first um, torch I used, it was with MAP, MAP, M-A-P-P. -P. Um, so like the tall, thin, like that gets really hot, you use for um, like welding and stuff. So that was the very first kind I used. And then I have since switched to. Oh, I love this turquoise. It is the most amazing turquoise. So there is about six bazillion cells in this. And you can tell this, I barely used any of this. So, use less silicone. <laughs> That's my tip. Use less silicone. Use less silicone than you think you need, and if you're going for negative space, use less paint than you think you need. And then I let my 
the flip and drag sit for a while um, because uh, then the paint kind of moves back to fill in areas. I'm trying to decide though if this, if I'm even going to want to, um, I'm going to try and collect paint from here. Hang on. Just scooping up paint from there. I don't know if I want to add those other colors in or not. I'll have to see. Well, I think I'm going to start by tilting it off this way because it's so close to the edge. And some of you, it drives you nuts. Others, if you love it, but don't be afraid to wipe off a canvas that or pour wood, whatever you're using, that you don't like. Trust me, it feels so freeing. Oh, and painting over canvases, I don't gesso, I just paint right over. But sometimes if you have too many layers, that will crack. So yes, I guess I have had, um, I'll have to show you. I've got one and I don't know why it's done what it's done, but it's, um, the canvas by now is like as hard as wood. I mean, and I think there's only three paintings on it. So this is not wanting to move very much, which is probably something is, uh, one of the paints might be thinner or thicker than the other. I'm trying to decide if I want to add those colors on top. I just don't know. You know what? Why not? Why not, I say? I'm just going to add it to the same flip cup. I don't know why I use yellow so much in my pores. I really, I mean, that's like a color I would never actually. Oh, crap. Well, I guess I can go off this way. And then when people ask me, how do you get cells? All I can... I mean, all I can say is everything I do, you're seeing. So, I mean, it's not like I have, you know, I'm not hiding anything. And I wish there was a magic way I could tell you that was surefire way. Okay, the yellow was probably not the best idea. It looks like a yolk. Slimy, slimy egg yolks. Kinda makes me a bit nauseous right now. Because <laughs> it just looks putrid. And now I can't stop thinking about egg yolks on my painting. Oh boy, I... No, this is not good. So I am just going to keep adding paint and I'm going to forget about this. I was trying to preserve that, but mm, who doesn't want some Pepto-Bismol with their egg yolks? See, this might be one of those ones that I just have to say. And you screwed up. You should not have added those extra colors. And now you've got a big ugly mess. 
which is ironic while you're sitting here blabbing about what to do and how to do paint. Oh my God, this is horrible. This is like the ugliest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my God, so ugly. Swiping can even help it. Yeah. Swiping it right off, maybe. You can see all the silicone still remaining. I mean, look at those stubborn cells that are like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and this, my friends, is how you give yourself a new start. You know, next time you screw up at work or something, say, I'm just going to pour the paint off and, it, and the mistake will be gone. Voila. Lovely. All right. I'm going to start anew. Let's try this again. Putting the lid on the yellow so I'm not even tempted. God. I don't think I'm going to be able to eat eggs for a while. This is really heinous. I do want to add some vermilion though. That's all. Oh no. Oh, and these these little cups, people ask me they're um these ones are two ounce cups with lids, and the other are five and a half ounce cups with lids from Amazon. They are a lifesaver. I'm going to add no on the big ear. I feel like wanting to add another color to this. Say no, Anne. Don't be stupid. You just did that and it sucked. All right. So. No. Let's try it this way. Spread it. And there, it will not be pure white because there are, you know, still colors, still paint a little bit from the previous pour, which is fine by me. If you've learned anything from watching me, it's that I am not a perfectionist. And then you'll say, but why do you pour off canvases? And that's not really a perfectionist thing. I just want, you know, I want a painting that I would want to hang up in my own house. But I'm always of the mind of it is just paint, you know?
Sometimes Floetrol can get um, chunky, but I'm not really sure what's going on with this. Because this seems, well, my Floetrol is almost empty. So, you know, oftentimes the gunk floats to the bottom, so I suppose it could be. But I'd rather pick it out than, um, I'm not going to bother straining it. That would be a pain in the ass. So let's just try a little bit different this time. So I'm just playing around with kind of pattern, you know, what happens if I do this? I wonder what effect the alizarin had on here. I'm thinking it just made everything a little darker. Oops. Now this is where it gets tricky when you get the bald spots. Because the paint doesn't want to flow over them. So then your paint ends up folding in on itself. Which usually yields an unattractive smush. I get that, I get it a lot though. I usually try and stop it before it gets too far by going like that. Kind of plumping it back up I feel like I'm just blathering on and on, but hopefully it's helpful for those of you who are new to the channel or, you know, just haven't been paying attention. <laughs> okay, I don't know where that color came from. Yeah, this is just not... Something is... The wrong consistency. I'm having a lot of trouble. You can see that it's tilting at different rates. Of course, it's kind of embarrassing that my, you know, how to where I solve all your questions is the one that I'm having the main issues with. I think I just don't have enough paint. So this, I'm just going to go real lightly on top. So I'm not So I shouldn't have any bald spots. Now I got more paint. See that here's where it folds in because there's just not enough right there. Yeah. 
six. to go off this end all the way I think I love the blue silvery color I'm getting I love the colors of this that there's no yolk on it. I'm going to get a straw. To help move this puppy along. embarrassing though to have this painting be like all crazy in my video where I'm supposed to be helping you with the answers. I guess this is the portion where you learn humility. This looks exactly like, I'm going to take this one down and show you. I know it looked familiar. I like this draw because it gives you interesting cells and kind of a watercolory effect. See, it just made all these interesting new cells and stuff. Torch it and see where I'm at. Really, really love the colors. Really, really, really. I can see there are tons of their lines. don't want to torch this much because I'm getting all those little white cells popping up, but you might not be able to see it, but from here I could see huge um, air bubbles being popped, so I kind of had to do it. Actually, the white isn't so bad. 
It kind of gives it a lacy look. Sure, just do it. Yeah. So you can see, like, I like it. <laughs> Certainly not what I was, you know, intending. Well, I guess it kind of was. I wanted a flip and drag, and I got that. I do love these colors. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I will catch you all next time. Bye.